simply the need to separate those out so that the implicit taxpayer guarantee, which was and should be given to the retail banks, isn't used by the banks to bail them out when they behave recklessly within the investment arms of their banks. That's what they concentrated on. Unfortunately, they fluffed it. Uh, they got the question wrong, and even the one they did try and answer, they fluff because they have, what they've actually done is to set up what are best described as Chinese walls, uh, between, uh, so they, they, it's not a complete split, uh, but there are supposed to be divisions between them which are going to be sufficient to maintain that separateness. I bet you within five years and probably considerably less, the banks will have found a perfect answer to get round it. Secondly, the Basel III uh, proposals uh, decided that the main way to control the banks was increasing the capital ratios, the amount of capital <laughs> they have to have relative to the amount uh, of um, lending uh, that they make. They proposed that it should be written, uh, uh, increased from 7 to 10 percent. For all the reasons you will, I think, have heard about this morning, uh, capital ratios are not going to be an adequate way, uh, whatever figure you choose, uh, to control the banks. And when you think this came, is going to come in, because we've just had a financial crash, a lot of people are talking about a possibly equally serious one not very far hence. So what did our politicians and our regulators decide? It should come in in 2019. <laughs> what does that tell you? So what should be done? Right, control of the money supply should be brought back into the public domain. That is the central requirement. Direct credit controls, and this is not a partisan objective, this is not a lefty, uh, vaguely progressive idea. Uh, this is something that has been tried by many of the most successful countries in the 20th century, uh, by Japan, by Korea, by Taiwan, uh, and many others. Uh, which have had phenomenal success uh, using this particular requirement. The only way to control credit is direct credit controls, not by imposing fancy financial instruments of one kind or another in respect uh, of the banks. Uh, the so-called window guidance, it's perhaps a bit more than windows, it's pretty, uh, pretty strong, but it is necessary. Central, the central bank would determine the desired nominal GDP growth. You work out what you expect or want uh, the GDP growth to be. You then estimate the amount of credit creation which is necessary to achieve that. Uh, and uh, you then allocate this credit across various types of banks and across industrial sectors. Uh, it is a form of uh, dirigism. That's perfectly true. Uh, I think it should be kept to a minimum, but that minimum is, I think, what is necessary compared to the exact opposite that we've had, which is total unregulated, unfettered freedom in the terms of market forces. Now, unproductive credit creation under this system, for example, uh, speculative uh, transactions like today's uh, lending to hedge funds, uh, was firmly suppressed in these countries, and consumer booms on any, uh, sorry, consumer loans on any significant scale, uh, which would trigger an inflationary demand uh, for consumer goods and would certainly draw in more imports, were discouraged, not impossible, but certainly discouraged and pretty hard to get. But the priority was given to productive investment, uh, to plant and equipment, to key services, to enhance productivity uh, with new technology and R&D. And I simply say, if we want to escape from the unsustainability of our current economic course, if we are going to be able to justify our standard of living by the goods and services that we produce and sell, I simply submit that some system of this kind has got to be introduced into this country. It is probably, I know we'll be talking about the NHS, we'll be talking about jobs, no doubt we'll be talking about Europe, and this is probably the single most important issue at the next election for a genuinely reforming uh, political party. I can't actually see one on the horizon at the moment, <laughs> but. 
uh, the state of events does produce uh, the consequences uh, that are needed. Um, the powers of public institutions in credit creation and allocation have clearly got to be greatly increased, uh, and there are very good reasons for that. Uh, banking crises are basically down to credit-driven uh, asset bubbles, and it is the role of public monetary policy uh, to be able to prevent these and to have the powers in order to be able to do that. Secondly, restrictions on direct uh, government credit creation imposed by the Maastricht Treaty I think should be reconsidered. I recognise that that has very significant EU implications, but those, uh, after all, the Tories are very keen on renegotiating uh, Maastricht in order to get back powers uh, over social, environmental and labour legislation, well, I think we can equally be looking uh, for major changes in a very different uh, direction. But partly, uh, I think it has to be reconsidered because the system has been put under enormous strain by the Eurozone sovereign debt crisis, but also the main reason is because the direct creation of money by government itself may well be needed to ensure that the economy reaches its full growth potential. And there couldn't be a better time for saying this than now. Because the, uh, I think with the, the last speaker, we, uh, you had a question about growth. Where's the growth? Uh, I think you were saying, or perhaps you were saying you didn't want growth, but a lot of people are saying they do want growth, and where is it? Uh, and the answer is, uh, in a recession, the private sector is never going to invest because there's no demand, there's no aggregate demand for its goods and services. The only way you can get out of a recession is when the public sector, uh, when the government, or backed by the government, generates those demands by uh, creating jobs, creating uh, infrastructure improvement, improvements in the digital and green economy, all the rest. That's the way in which it needs to be done, and the government needs to have the power to do that. And there are very good reasons why the government should have it, because there are no servicing costs in terms of interest, or interest upon interest, what's called compounded interest, which makes it a, a lot more efficient and cost-effective. And the last uh, point I want to make is uh, if why we need uh, greater powers of public institutions is control uh, over financial derivatives, the structured investment vehicles, the collateralised debt obligations, and above all, the credit default swaps. The, 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 the size of credit default swaps in the City of London would stagger you. It is well over £60 trillion. Pounds. It is absolutely staggering. I'm not saying it's all wrong or all bad. I'm saying quite a lot of it is corrupt and bad, but it needs to be effectively controlled, either prohibited or certainly tightly controlled. Now, I've probably gone on for my time. I would just say this, because certain things I've not mentioned, this is going to take 30 seconds and no more. Uh, there are, of course, other issues with regard to the banks. Uh, the, full, the full separation of retail from investment, uh, we need specialist banks, not just four big banks. Uh, banks that deal with infrastructure, banks which deal with knowledge and R&D, banks which deal with mortgages, perhaps Northern Rock, uh, for uh, low-income households. Um, banks that deal with the green economy, which is coming and specialising in that. There are problems, of course, over credit agencies, credit rating agencies. I didn't go into that, but it's a really serious problem. Proprietary trading by the banks and, of course, bonuses. But the key issue, the central issue, the overwhelming issue, which this country has got to face up to, is the restoration of democratic accountability via uh, the control over the money supply. And I must say I play a tremendous tribute to Ben Dyson and the other people in Positive Money, New Economics Foundation, because I think they are saying something of enormous overriding importance for this country, which the politicians, the opinion makers in the media and everyone else have ignored. And I am very grateful that you are finally bringing it to public attention. Thank you. <laughs>